I'm Garrick DeMeyer from Royal Constrictor Designs. This is the first video that I'm doing since I got back from the NRBE, the National Reptile Breeders Expo in Daytona, Florida. I went down there, um, took my family down on basically a vacation, uh, stayed at the ocean, or stayed at the Daytona Hilton. Uh, I got to go to the show all weekend. Kids got to do a lot of swimming and uh, hanging out at the pool and stuff. And uh, I got a chance to go around and actually be on the customer side of the table for a change. Last time I was able to do that was actually about 10 years ago at the same show. Um, usually when I'm at shows, I'm so busy dealing with my own stuff and my own booth, I never get a chance to go out and look around. So, and usually when I do, I'm just running around up and down through the aisles to look at everything as fast as I can before I get a chance or, um, and not have a chance to really look at things and really talk to other breeders and customers very often. So uh, this trip was great for me. I got to see so many cool animals, got to reconnect and, and connect with a lot of different uh, breeders down there. Saw a lot of my YouTube followers down there. Uh, just saw some incredible animals. It was a great trip. But I came back and I'm paying for it now. I've got so many babies. I'm still backed up on, on putting babies away. I've got this stack right here. Um, I probably have 20 clutches of babies that I have to get set up within the next week uh, that have hatched and shed already. So that's the problem when you uh, when you go on vacation during the height of the hatching season. There's a lot of work that has to be done before you leave and when you come back. So glad to be back though. I've got some awesome stuff to show you. This video is going to be extremely clown heavy because I'm pretty clown heavy with my collection. So I've got some really cool stuff I want to show you. I got a couple other non-clown things that I'm going to show you too. And then I'll be back again very soon with another video, I hope. I'm having a, kind of a hard time fitting in time to do these videos lately because I've got so much with dealing with all these babies, getting them all set up, feeding them all, um, just a lot of stuff going on. So anyway, I'm going to do my best. So let's start looking at some clowns. This first clutch is, uh, this is the easiest clutch, or clutch that I have here as far as figuring out what's what. This is from a pastel lesser hypo clown bred to a pastel hypo clown. So there can only be so many different combinations and because they're both parents are both hypo and clown, every baby's going to be hypo and clown. Okay, so here is a pastel hypo clown. I actually think these may be killer clowns. That's the only question that I have with this whole clutch is whether or not these are pastel hypo clowns or or uh, pastel, I'm sorry, uh, killer hypo clowns. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. You'd think it wouldn't be that hard, but it is a little tricky. Uh, these guys are pretty light colored, so I'd say they probably are super pastel hypo clowns or killer hypo clowns. I'm not 100% sure with those. Okay, here's the next one. That's a pastel lesser hypo clown. For me. They're going to get set up and get their first meals this week. And then here is, I believe that one is a hypo. Actually, that's probably a pastel hypo clown too. That one's most likely a blade. Um, you can see it's got a little bit of more head pattern. Colors pretty similar. Patterns very different. But I believe these two are both pastel hypo, le oh, pastel lesser hypo clowns. Sorry, too many names in there. Okay, and this one is a hypo lesser killer clown. I'll put these squirmy ones back in here for now. So this is a super pastel lesser hypo clown. So I thought that was going to be the easiest clutch to identify. I uh, kind of forgot that I had those uh, these pastel hypo clowns or killer hypo clowns in there. Like I said, I'm pretty sure these are both killers. I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, so another clutch that's actually pretty easy to figure out. This is from a pastel GHI clown bred to a pastavi het clown. So we got a clown. Another clown. GHI Mojave 
Het Clown. Love GHI Mojaves. Okay, this is a Pastavi Clown. So Pastel Mojave and Clown. And here is a Pastel GHI Clown. It's funny, some of these are kind of hard to differentiate from a regular Pastel Clown that's got a busier pattern. And some of them are really easy. And this one was, I got lucky, this one's a really, really easy one to figure out. Then, here is a GHI Mojave Clown. I was hoping to hit on a Pastavi this time. Uh, this one's a female. This is the, the second one that I've produced so far. Really, really like these. I think there's a lot of uh, possibilities with this if you can throw some different pattern in there with it. This one does have a little bit more pattern than the first one that I produced uh, last year that I actually held on to. Haven't decided what I'm going to do with her yet. I do kind of want to replace all my uh, like Pastavi hat clowns and things like that and this would be a perfect animal to replace those breeders with eventually a few years down the road This one's probably about 60 to 65 grams right now So she has a long ways to go before she'd be ready to breed, but that's okay. I have patience Okay, so that clutch is pastel GHI clown to Pastavi het clown Really good odds with clown versus not clown. It should have been 50-50, but this is the only non-clown. And it ended up being almost the best case scenario for not being a clown. GHI Mojaves are really highly sought after. And with one being a het for clown, that's definitely a bonus. Okay. I promised myself that I would kind of get through these kind of quickly. But um, it's not really happening all that well, but... That's okay. Okay, this next clutch was supposed to be a black pastel lavender bred to a killer clown. Um, I know I had put a, a male in with her at some point in the past, a different male other than the black pastel lavender. Um, I never saw that male breed that uh, the killer clown, so um, I decided, well, I'd rather produce some double hat um, lavender clowns. Uh, but apparently, a clown combo father this clutch. Um, I believe the other possibility would have been a butter um, Enchi clown male, but I'm not sure. It actually, it, you know what, that is not, the, not a possibility because I've got a bunch of super pastels in here. So I'll have to go back in my records and kind of look and see what other males I would have put in with her, uh, but at least they're all clowns, so that's good. So that looks to me like a super pastel lesser clown so I know that there's lesser or butter I guess it could be um, in this clutch and then I got some really weird looking killer clowns in here that's why I really want to figure out what other male could have fathered this clutch because these things have pattern like I've never seen I do have an orange dream pastel butter clown male that m maybe I put him in with her. I'm just not sure. Normally I'm very good about writing on the side of the tub what um, what male is going with what female. That's why this clutch is so confusing to me because I never... And of course the phone's ringing again. Um, so yeah, I don't know what... Uh, what male father this clutch but I'd like to find out because these are the weirdest looking killer clowns like I've never seen them with so much like stretched out pattern on them it's really cool and that guy looks pretty awesome too okay I'm gonna put these guys away I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit I've got a lot of stuff I gotta do yet today okay so the next clutch here Orange Dream, Yellow Belly Fire, Het Clown, Bred to a Clown. So, first, we got pretty good odds with this. There was a pair of normal hats in this clutch as well. This, I'm pretty sure is an Orange Dream, Fire, Yellow Belly, Het Clown. I'm not 100% sure on the Orange Dream. I mean, his, his colors are... Pretty bright, not quite as bright as some of the Orange Dream Fire Yellow Bellies that I've hatched. 
I know he's got fire and I know he has yellow belly in there. I'm, I would say he's probably an orange dream. I'll keep him for a few weeks, let him get up, get a little bit of size on him. If he's an orange dream, the colors will just come out in him. The, the lighter color on him will really brighten up a lot. I got fooled last year by a uh, by an orange dream fire, what was supposed to be an orange dream fire, yellow belly, double hat dreamsicle last year. And so I held on to him and now he's probably about, I don't know, 400 grams. And I can see that he doesn't have orange dream in him. His, his a lighter pattern just never brightened up the way an orange dream would be. You know, ball pythons can really teach you a lot of patience and, you know, they're, you know, sometimes they can be slow growing. Sometimes they can take a while to start breeding. Uh, nowadays, the patience part of it is figuring out what all these are. Sometimes you just have to put them on the shelf and let them grow for a few months uh, to really know for sure what everything is. Okay, so then the next one is this guy right here. And I believe that that is a fire clown. And this is another one. I don't think those have Orange Dream in them. Orange Dream is pretty tough to see in some clown combos, especially if you start adding fire and other things to it. Um, I, I don't, these are pretty bright for fire clowns. I'm not 100% sure they may have Orange Dream in them as well. But then you get ones like this, where this guy is pretty easy to figure out. This is an Orange Dream fire yellow belly clown. Look at the side pattern on that snake. That's just a really, really cool snake. Actually, I'm not even sure what the sex of him is. Let's find out together. Him or her, I should say. Huh, I was right. It is a boy. So that's good. He'll probably end up staying here, but maybe not. I don't know. I've got some other pretty cool uh, orange dream clown combo males that are hatching yet. So anyway, that's the orange dream fire yellow belly clown. Then I, I would probably want to stick Leopard or Spot Nose into that. And maybe even do a Super Orange Dream version of that. Okay. Speaking of Super Orange Dream. This next clutch is from an Orange Dream Clown bred to an Orange Dream Butter Clown. First one here. I have a light flickering in here. First one here is a clown. And then we have an orange dream clown. So the orange dream is just a little bit lighter, a little bit actually more washed out and with a, a darker back pattern. You know, it's a little tough because I mean, a normal clown has some kind of orangey, yellowish colors along the side too. This one's just got a lot more of it. So this is definitely an orange dream clown. Okay, then I believe that this one is a butter clown. This one's an orange dream butter clown. This one actually has a lighter uh, dark, you know, the dark pattern is actually lighter. I'm not 100% sure on these two though. This one, I believe to be a super orange dream butter clown. And again, I'm not 100% sure on these. I've never produced a super orange dream clown before. Uh, this is my first shot at it. Second shot at it, first time I didn't hit on any, I, I know from what the, happened, hatched in the clutch, but um, this is the first time I think I've ever hatched Super Orange Dream clown combos. And here's another one. So I think these two are the same. This one just has a lot more reduced pattern. Blade, I'm sure, doing that. So I think these are Super Orange Dreams, Orange Dream. Orange Dream, well, Super Orange Dream Butter, Orange Dream Butter, Butter, Normal Clown, and Orange Dream Clown. I'm pretty sure.
I welcome all, all, all comments or suggestions too. Some people may have more experience with them than me, and I'm always willing to listen to other people's opinions on things. I did have another breeder over here last week, and uh, he looked at these, and um, he was pretty certain that I have these pegged correctly. Okay. Get these guys set back up in here. Okay, uh, now I didn't want to make this video exclusively about clowns because I have lots of other stuff too. So let's look at some other things that I can't quite identify for sure. Uh, this one is from Banana Calico, bred to a spinner blast. And this calico, or the Banana Calico, is a possible yellow belly. Um, I've only produced a couple clutches with them and never really saw anything that screamed out yellow belly to me. Um, but some really, really cool, crazy stuff in here. Okay, so this one is a banana spinner blast. And this is a banana bumblebee. I'm pretty sure it's calico. Hard thing with spider is that they ha typically have pretty uh, high white sides anyway. Calico usually brings the pattern way up high on the sides, but this one kind of has some, I'm just not sure about him. Uh, I'll let him grow up a little bit and hopefully it'll become more obvious. Now these two here, these two are banana calico pinstripes. This one's a little lower white than the other one. But I just think they're really cool snakes. I mean, look, they're just fluorescent yellowy orange, uh, nice light purple markings. Really, really cool snakes. So I don't, I don't necessarily see spider in either one of these. I guess there's a, a chance that they may have spider, but I'm not sure. But obviously, there's banana, calico, and pinstripe in them. And and also these two make me think there's yellow belly as well. You know, they've got the nice yellow along the sides, the way a lot of banana yellow bellies do. Somebody trying to escape here. Look at those sides. Really cool stuff, I think, anyway. Okay, one more clutch to show you. I'm gonna go back into some recessive stuff again. Okay, this clutch is from a black pastel lavender albino bred to a lavender albino spider. First one here had a really nice lavender spider. Love the head pattern on this. Okay, this one, I think, this one may be a black pastel lavender spider. This one right here is for sure. The colors are definitely different between these two and that one. Pattern is a lot busier with these two. I produced several lavender spiders in the past and they've all been extremely busy pattern like this. This one's kind of in between pat, you know, in between this one's pattern and that one's pattern. But I think these are actually both black pastel lavender spiders. And then here's a regular black pastel lavender. If I can get them to stretch out here a little bit. There we go. I just think that these are these all have black pastel in them, possibly not this one. And this one's just a regular lavender spider. Really like lavender stuff. I'm trying to get so many different genes in the lavender right now. I just think they're, they're just so cool, especially when they're babies, but they're pretty cool as adults too, for the most part. Uh, 
All right, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm gonna come back with some more videos again pretty soon. I got tons of babies hatching yet. Um, I believe I'm at 1,990 eggs for the year so far. And we're probably running about 95% fertility, maybe even a little bit higher, and over a 90% hatch rate overall. So uh, this year is going by just incredible. Uh, so I'll have a lot more to show you, hopefully through all through the winter. Um, speaking of that, it's actually cooling off here in Wisconsin quite a bit right now. Our high today was only like 67 degrees or something like that, and I'm not even sure if it's going to hit that. So uh, I'm going to be sending out some orders today, and I actually have to ship with a heat pack today. It's just it's crazy. I uh, think we might be in for a really cold winter again, which I'm not looking forward to. So anyway, enough of me complaining about that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and please like and subscribe. And I will be back again with another one very soon. And also make sure to check out my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. See you soon.